On the 28th of March in 2022, Jace, Summers, TSM Beezy, and Desire would attempt to rob a man in the parking lot of the West University Apartments in Houston, as one of their dealers supposedly took $1,000 from them without any product, nor could he refund it due to reaching his Zelle limit for the day, but he still offered to give the money back in cash. While Summers was very upset at his dealer and wanted to set a level of respect, so he brought up the plan of agreeing to get his $1,000 back from the dealer, but then also beating him up and robbing him, which they did. The four men would pull up to the parking lot of the West University apartment complex, where the dealer was waiting in a black BMW. Jace, Breezy and Desire would all enter the dealer's black BMW, while Summers stayed outside so he could attack him from the dealer's driver's side door. However, things would quickly go south. A fight would break out, shots would be fired, and police would be called, resulting in an arrest of all four suspects. A short time later, all of them would be facing charges that could get them 99 years in prison each. But after allegations of Summers holding Jace at gunpoint and Jace supposedly snitching to the police, what actually went down on the night of the 20th of March in 2022? How did all four of them get locked up and ultimately, did Jace actually snitch? So before we get into the actual robbery and what went down, I need to give some backstory to viewers who may not be familiar with these people. Jay Salters, also known as Jay, which used to be spelled like E-I-Z, is one of the suspects in the armed robbery. He was a very popular underground rapper who had a very hot song at one point called 556. I used to hang around with an underground supergroup called Slay World, with members such as Autumn, Can Can and Summers. Deontay Johnson, also known as Summers, is one of the suspects in the armed robbery. He's a very prominent figure within the underground, a pioneer of the plug and bead genre, that came out around 2021 and was a member of the Slay World Collective. Then Brennan Lightfoot, known as TSM Beezy, who is also a rapper and a close friend of Summers. And finally, Jacob McNeil, known as Desire, who is also a rapper and Summers' youngest brother. Now, after the four men, Summers and Jace were the big stars. At the time in 2022, they were really popular within the underground scene and both were favourites to end up making it big. Jace at this point in time had two hot songs, 556, which went viral on TikTok, then going through teas with Summers, who hit himself had just released two fan favourite projects, What We Have and Nothing More, Nothing Less. So put it this way, none of them were tight on cash, which makes what they did later seem even more silly. Then BZ and Desire on the other hand, who were smaller upcoming rappers, not really known from their own name more so associates of Summers. Now on the night of the 20th of March, Jace, Beezy and Desire were at a go-kart track. Whilst they were speaking on the phone to Summers, where they learned that he had been in dispute with his dealer over a thousand dollars, where he sent him the money but never got his narcotics in return. Now we never know why the dealer didn't get Summers his stuff, however, what we do know is the dealer attempted to send Summers his money back, but he couldn't, as he had reached his Zelle limit for the day. On the phone, Jace stated that he had agreed to help Summers get his money back. Originally, the plan was Jace was supposed to pick up Summers, they can go get the money back together, but he changed his mind, as he thought there would be a violent confrontation when they met, which he didn't want to happen. So Jace thought it would be better if he just went to collect the $1,000 himself and then return it to Summers. Jace then spoke to the dealer himself, we had agreed to meet him at the West University apartment complex parking lot. After the plan was set, Jace took Beezy and Desire back to his apartment where he took a shower. After the shower, the trio got into Jace's car again and drove around, where Beezy had received a phone call from Summers, where he expressed how angry he was and that he had planned to assault the dealer. Eventually, the three would drive back to their apartment complex where Summers would join them in the car. Once all in the car, they had discussed another plan on how they were going to set a respect limit to show the dealer not to mess with them and their money again. And this setting of a respect limit was probably going to be a very violent affair, which is why Jace wanted to go collect the money himself peacefully, which seemed like the smarter move. Instead of risking your life over a thousand dollars and also having the chance of basically crashing out over such a small amount of money. After they had discussed the plan, they then had drove to the parking lot of West University Apartments, each armed with Glocks. Apart from Jace, who stated in the police report he didn't have a weapon on him, which I don't believe to be true as he owns multiple firearms, but I'm guessing he just didn't want to incriminate himself. But anyways, in the parking lot, the dealer was sat waiting for them, as he had withdrew $4,000 from nearby ATM so he can pay back Summers for not giving him his supply. But at this point in time, the dealer thought he was only meeting Jace, as he feared meeting Summers face to face. Once they arrived in the parking lot, they pulled up next to the dealer's vehicle, where Jace, Desire and Beezy got out of Jace's white BMW and entered the dealer's car. Jace would get into the front passenger seat, whilst Desire and Breezy sat in the back. And at this point in time, the dealer had
had $1,000 in cash on the console and another $2,000 on the dash. BZ and Desire started demanding for the money while holding him at gunpoint until one of them eventually grabbed the $1,000 from the console and struck him in the head with a pistol. Summers would then get out of Jace's vehicle and walk up to the dealer's car where he would open his driver's side door, grab the $2,000 from the dash where the dealer attempted to stop Summers from taking the money to which Summers responded by pistol whipping the driver in the head. Desire and BZ would also start striking the driver from the back seat whilst Jace attacked him from the passenger seat. However, the dealer had a gun on his vehicle's console, a black and gold Glock with a switch, which he attempted to grab. A scuffle would break out over this weapon and it eventually ended up in Jace's lap and now in his control. Now this is where we get two different perspectives of the story. From Jace's interview with the police, he stated that while BZ, Desire and Summers were beating the dealer in his car, Jace got out and fired the Glock in the air in an attempt to stop the fight. Whilst in an interview with the victim, apparently, after taking the money from the car, one of the four suspects then started shouting, let's go, let's go, and air him out, which is when they would all leave the vehicle in an attempt to get back to Jace's car so they could flee the scene. The dealer would then jump out of his car after getting beat up, which is when he saw Jace standing in the parking lot aiming his gun at him. Jace would fire his weapon, where the victim stated that he saw a muzzle flash and heard a gunshot from the direction Jace was standing. Now the victim said Jace was aiming at him and then shot, but from the police report, it isn't very clear what had happened. Jace stated that he had shot in the air to stop the fight, then a short time later, more shots were let off inside the car, which could have been either from Summers, BZ or Desire, which makes the most sense as the dealer's BMW X3 ended up having two bullet holes in the rear bumper area. But then the victim stated that he saw Jace point his gun at him, saw a muzzle flash and heard a gunshot from where Jace was standing, which either could have been Jace attempting to shoot the driver or shoot up in the air. Now I doubt Jace would be stupid enough to shoot an unarmed man that they just beat up. But Jace shooting in the air, okay, it explains one of the shots. But then what about the two bullet holes in the back of the dealer's X3? Well, it was either while Summers, BZ and Desire were inside of the car, scuffling over the guns and the money. Shots may have been accidentally let off, but if two shots were let off inside the car, going towards the rear bumper of the car, it would have been very close to hitting BZ and Desire, who were sat in the back. Or was it as they all fled the vehicle, one of the four men had decided to just shoot back at the car to scare the dealer? I don't really have a theory I'm 100% sure on, but my guess is that they were all scuffling inside the car and somehow shots were let off by accident. Anyways, after they all fled the vehicle, they then drove back to Jace's apartment complex where Jace had stated he was held at gunpoint by his associates, Summers, BZ and Desire to enter his apartment complex, where the three then fled the scene from the patio before police arrived. Once inside the apartment, Jace still had the black and gold Glock he took from the dealer, so he had to hide it in the apartment. After the robbery, police would be called to the West University apartments where they would arrive and start questioning multiple witnesses, where one witness at the scene stated that they saw a white BMW put into the apartment complex and three or four black male suspects exited a white BMW and approached a dark vehicle, which was a dealer's BMW X3. The witness then stated that they got into some type of altercation, shots were fired and the four men fled in the white BMW. A short time later, the police checked with dispatch if there was any hospital calls around the time of the shooting, which there was. The police then drove to the hospital and met with the victim, where he explained that he was assaulted and robbed by three or four black men, with at least one of them discharging their firearm. One of the police officers then contacted a former courtesy officer for the West University Apartments, who told the police he was familiar with a problem resident who owns a white BMW sedan and that he lives in the apartment 1139. The police would then arrive at apartment 1139, where they were met with Jace and his girlfriend. Jace told them earlier in the day that he had been robbed in the parking lot of the apartment complex and he had defended himself. The two then consented to have their apartment searched, where officers recovered multiple firearms from the master bedroom closet, including the dealer's black and gold Glock pistol with a switch device attached, which turned it into an illegal, fully automatic weapon. The police then viewed CCTV from the apartment complex, where they saw Jace in possession of the black and gold Glock. Jace would then be shortly arrested for possession of a prohibited weapon. After the arrest, forensics were called to collect fired shell casings in the parking lot, a cell phone in the parking lot, further evidence from the parking lot, and then the black and gold pistol from Jace's apartment. Jace would then be told his rights, where he told the police he understood his rights and agreed to waive them to speak to the police. Now this is when Jace would give an entire statement of what happened on the night of the 20th of March in 2022, which I just read to you. He also admitted that he knows all three of the other robbers by name and sight, where he identified them to the police by their rap names, Summer easy and desire and also gave them a description of what they were wearing at the night of the robbery which later helped police identify them on cctv a day after the incident jace would be given a bond of thirty thousand dollars for his arrest on the possession of a prohibited weapon which isn't a very 
serious charge. On the Louisiana statute site, it states that whoever commits the crime of illegal carrying of weapons shall be fined not more than $500 or imprisoned for not more than six months or both. As soon as Jace was arrested, it would come out on social media that he was locked up, which of course got fans concerned. A day after his arrest, Jace's bond would be posted, where he would be released and he would be seen on Instagram Live speaking to fans, where first he was laughing, smiling and cracking jokes about how he was just caught with a stick and got out instantly, even bragging about how he was noticed by someone in the jail for his song 556. I got caught with, man, I ain't even gonna say it. What's good, y'all? I got caught with that motherfucker that make that glitch noise. Mm-hmm. Hair raggedy and the bitch, I'm fresh out. Nigga walk up to me on that hoe, he say, damn, you, you that nigga who make music, right? Right, what you mean that 556 five, shit? Yeah, I know Sosa. I right, damn free Sosa, bro. I'm finna take a shower. They had me in that cell smelling like Taco Bell. All good. <laughs> Good. After that, he would then state that the people that got him in the situation, which was Summers, Beezy and Desire, well, he will not be associating with them as they got him in this situation in the first place. And the motherfuckers that got me in this situation, I ain't gonna say no names, but on God and stuff, I'm not hanging out with these niggas no more. I'm not allowed to, what happened, happened in front of my place. Like now I'm not allowed to go to the dog park. Now I'm not allowed to go play pool. Now I'm not, now I'm not allowed in the lobby. My lease wasn't terminated. But what was terminated was what they call it, my ownership of the premises. Yeah. That was terminated, so now I can't even do shit. So with the niggas that got me where I got, like, bro, he's never cool no more. So when y'all see me not hanging out with certain motherfuckers, don't ask why on bro, because niggas got me in that cell. Now further in the IG live, Jay says some things that just simply don't make sense. First of all, he brags about being caught with a Glock with a switch and how he's been instantly released. As if, first of all, what he is saying can incriminate him as he is clearly not apologetic for the crimes he has committed, which could result in a harsher punishment. Then second of all, he's only been released on bond. He's jumping around smiling and laughing as if he's beat the case. He then says, and I quote, the detective was fucking with me though, which I cannot express enough how stupid that sounds. The detective's entire job is to make himself seem friendly so he cooperate and speak to them. Now after Jace finished the Instagram live, a fan would post the entire thing on an archive page on YouTube, where well, the victim's mother would actually see this live and send it to the police. And in the police report it states, based on this information above, Jace Salter was charged and arrested for aggravated robbery. Meaning that IG live, Jace went on and then got posted to YouTube by a fan, ended up being the final piece to his second charge. On the 1st of April, the victim's mother would come forward to the police again, this time with evidence she found in the victim's car. First, she handed over a white t-shirt with a bullet lodged inside of it. Then she also gave a grey camouflage sandal, which was found under the front passenger seat of the vehicle, which wasn't the victim's. Police then later identified it was Beezy's slipper, as the victim did his own research and saw that Beezy had posted a picture of him at the zoo earlier in the day wearing the same sandals. The police would then get further images of the four men together from the Instagram page Desire underscore archive, which later helped the police identify them. The victim also knew each of them by their face and rap name and was asked to complete multiple photo spreads which he completed successfully, meaning even if Jace didn't tell the police, they would have been screwed anyways as the victims literally knew them personally. Later on, the police would then identify Summers, Beezy and Desire through their Spotify and other social media pages. However, a couple days after the original arrest, on the 4th of April, Jace would be hit with a second charge, which I just mentioned about a couple seconds earlier on the Instagram live, where he would be charged with aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon, where it is stated on the Louisiana State Legislature site that whoever commits the crime of an armed robbery shall be imprisoned at hard labour for not less than 10 years and for not more than 99 years without benefit of parole, probation or suspension of sentence. Now if I was here with a charge like that, I'd definitely start snitching, especially with the fact that the Glock Jace fired had a switch on it, making it a lot worse which could have resulted in him getting a heavier charge. After this, Jace would be here with a bond of $50,000 which would be posted. Now after this second charge, with police, things would stay quiet and it seemed like their investigation was already complete and they knew who they wanted to arrest. However, it was after Jace got his second charge, things would get busy on the social media side of things. Eventually, Desire and Beezy would turn themselves in on the 3rd of May, where they would be both booked in for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. After they turned themselves in, Summers would post a story, free KB, free Beezy, SMH, with KB being Desire, as he also goes under that name. Just a couple days later, 
later, Summers would turn himself in, where he would post a series of stories saying, going to try to have tape drop by Monday, I gotta turn myself in soon, bear with me, pray with me. Now I ain't saying I'm finna sit, cause Bond's good, but I'm finna be on that monitor I know. Everything happened for a reason though, cause God know I wouldn't quit by myself, sit my last drank while I can, SMH. Shortly after all four suspects were arrested, fans online started accessing court documents, and it would become known to the internet that Jace in fact had spoken to the police and told them the names of his three associates. The Rue Baby, Louisiana's most dangerous gangster and close associate of Summers and Can Can would then go on live and call out Jace for snitching. The snitching, snitching, nigga snitching, we been spamming niggas, nigga snitching. And you was my, that was my hoe too. We was like this, that nigga is a, nah, they ain't, I ain't even finna speak on that. Boy is snitching, boy is rats. We was like this, man. Niggas rat with blicks. It's a lot of reading you got to do because it's 16 pages, man. It's 16 pages of this shit, bro. 16, not one, two, three, four, five, six. 16 pages of this shit, bro. Niggas, man. Niggas out here ratting, man. Now after all these allegations of snitching, Jace's career was at risk so to defend himself, he posted a story of the court documents where he then captioned, show me where it says me, which is him basically telling everyone, so you're calling me a snitch but where does it say I snitched? And I swear to god, I'm not trying to be funny but I don't know if Jace genuinely has some type of reading, disability, but in the documents he posted, it literally writes multiple times, he admitted, he also admitted, Salter identified, meaning he is the one that admitted these things, I mean he even consented to the police searching his apartment while he has a Glock switch in the room. Jace would also go on IG live to defend himself and explain the situation. He would address how Summers got himself in this situation because he wanted to be a fake gangster even though they're both rich. Multiple times Reno's tried to play gangster. This is the reason I'm in this predicament. You know like Reno tried to play gangster so much and we're rich. You know like Reno want to go do this then do that then do this then do that. Bitch, sit at the crib. You're not no thug. You know? You're not that. Sit down, bitch. Niggas would read the paperwork. It doesn't say you snitched. Right? Is what I'm saying. You know? The, you know? It's like Jay said he did not know that the woo do woo woo didn't know shit. Then it'll also show you we went through his social media and found niggas. Me and Sosa, me and Ken are still cool that you tell you something. Now again, Jace is trying to say that he didn't snitch, but on the paperwork, it does say Salter waved his rights and Salter identified these males. So again, I don't know about that. Then after that, he claimed he is still cool with Can Can, which would come back to bite him a day later, but we'll get onto that in a second. On the same day as that live, he also dropped the diss track, Come Get Me, where he has bars such as TSMK, Throw It Down and I'll F The Fella Mum, which is a clear diss towards the rapper TSMBZ, as he added a K to his gang's name, which means he is the killer of that particular group. A day after the diss dropped, Can Can, who is a longtime friend of Summers and a former member of the Slaywood Collective, would post a story saying, how you rat, then drop a diss on the motherfuckers you ratted on, and would also go on live to expose Jace and his snitching. Nigga, they read him his rights and he waived his rights. He started talking instead of saying, nigga, can I have a lawyer? Like, nigga didn't even eat first. Like, they didn't even offer him no meal yet. He just started telling. They must have went in there and told, bro, you finna get three life sentences. No probation. Like, bro, literally, that shit is crazy. After Can Can went on live, Jace came back with another diss called I Didn't, where he literally took shots at everyone. I ain't gonna lie, I kept it silent, did my shit. I ain't did shit, but tell them fellas to get off my dick, which is just him reinforcing the idea that he didn't snitch. You ain't going beef with a snitch, you can get him split. So tell me why the F is I ain't here. And in those bars, he's questioning the fact that they stated that they're not going to beef with a snitch, so why are they accusing Jace of snitching, then beefing with him, as that would mean they are contradicting themselves. He would also have bars aimed at Daru, saying, he got robbed and he didn't do anything back then also that he used to aim his poles at can can and make him sit which i don't really know what that meant basically saying can can used to be his bitch jason would also diss bz's group tsm deru's group pmo and can can's collective double r in the line you know tsmk pmo k double rk then just a couple of days later around the 11th of may summers bz and desire would have posted bail and as soon as they were released tsm bz would release a diss track at jace after he dissed his group 
group TSM. The song was called Dangerous when one of the lines he would diss Jace's daughter, Ella, by saying, I tried to give your family a pass, but Ella, she gotta get it. Which is an absolutely insane thing to say about another man's infant daughter, basically saying that he's gonna pull up on her. Jace would respond to this on Instagram Live by dissing BZ, saying, Why are you dissing me, but you didn't diss the guy that killed your best friend? You ain't gonna smoke my baby, nigga. Go get some get back for your dead ass homeboy. Go dig him up. We spit on his grave. Uh -huh. Now, since Jace had the entire internet after him and was having so much publicity, it seemed like he was just trying to take down Summers with him. He went on an IG live with 1032 up where he started calling Summers out. Fuck them niggas on my mama. Them niggas, uh, my mama. Niggas get they Drake us took. How the fuck you get a Drake us took on my mama? You beat your girl on my mama. You fake. You fake slide. You fake ODs. You fake jail. You fake all that, like, niggas is hoes, like. Later in the IG live, Jace would also try to make Summers, BZ, and Desire look like snitches. Because all of them got released after they posted Bond, which makes sense. You get released when you post your bail. But then, he would actually bring up an interesting point. Out of the four of them that did the robbery, only two of them got ankle monitors. I want to know how that nigga out. So Summers out. Because they tell it, because they... Because yeah. it's how you get on, how you yeah, it. look, they're beat. Some of them don't even got no ankle monitor. How I got the ankle monitor? Mm. That's that's looking real, you know? I mean, look, at the end of the day, what confused me is I thought that boy was going to be gone because he said he's going to turn himself in, right? Like, it's, you know? So well, how the fuck you get out the next day, well? That's my whole point. Like, how you that's get out I'm the saying, next like, day with no monitor, no nothing? No, no. Oh, I mean, it, I mean, he might be on the monitor. No, I know one of them ain't. I'm just not allowed to say who. Which doesn't make a lot of sense as all of them got the same charge. In the last segment of the live, Jace would then go on to make fun of Summers and how he is broke. We know you to be broke asking me to buy him a bust down Cardi Air watch when I first signed my deal. Hey, while I'm here, you he making 40K a month? Or I don't know somebody on Discord say that. I said cap off rip. Who? Reno, they say he making 40K a month off. Reno has zero dollars in his bank account. The only reason he got more money is because a nigga named. But I ain't gonna. I know, I know, I know. A nigga helped you, you, you get that. That went out from the music. A nigga did not make no money from the music. A nigga, a nigga had negative money. A nigga asked me, Jay, should I buy this car? Should I buy this watch? I, I'm overdue on rent. I got zero dollars in my fucking name. Like, bro was waiting on his next rap chat to check to buy a watch. Like, nigga, go pay your rent, broke ass nigga. Like, what are you doing? But after this live, and for the first time since the night of the incident, Summers would respond to Jace in a series of Instagram stories that read, You'll never have no dirt on my name. That's the only thing you thought you had. I'm not in your boat. Lil one, you put us in jail. Bet, stop that before I put the physical paperwork out that my public defender showed me in jail. As in the Instagram live with 2UP, Jace said that he has secret information on Summers that he can release. And apparently the secret Jace had on Summers was that people thought Summers had spoke to the police because in a case a couple years back they took his and his girlfriend's clothes but in reality it was his girlfriend that called them as she wanted her clothes back and it just happened that summer's clothes were in that bag too sorry i'm trying to decipher this louisiana type style and you know it doesn't really make a lot of sense apparently the only thing he asked the police was who does he call to freeze his social security number where well, he would further explain that he didn't even speak to the police properly didn't give any names nor what had happened but all of this was from an incident a long time ago and it seemed like jace just wanted to scare Summers with some random non-irrelevant information he had on him from years ago. Summers would then also show us an image of a text conversation between him and Jace, which started on the 5th of April, eight days after the robbery, and three days after Jace received his second charge, the aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. Man, you are got to tell the truth, to which Summers replied with what? Andreas told them everything was me, and everything was mine, and I hit him too, which Summers would respond with, man, DM. Now the Andreas Jace mentioned is the victim in the robbery. Now what Jason in the text, Andres told them everything was me and everything was mine and I hit him too. Well he's referring to the fact that in the report, the victim stated that Jace was the main perpetrator and the everything Jace mentioned in the text of Summers, I'm guessing it was about the Glock. As in the police report, the victim said he was unarmed at the time of the robbery. Whilst Jace said the victim had a black and gold Glock in the vehicle's console. So it seemed like the victim was trying to make it seem like it was Jace's Glock. Especially with the fact that it had a switch, which is very illegal. So that text, it was basically Jace pleading Summers, Beezy and Desire to come forward and tell the police that they had played a part in the crime too. And it wasn't all Jace. Otherwise Jace would pretty much be taking all the charges. Summers then texted Jace saying, answer your FaceTime. Where he also adds that 
that he has no idea what he's talking about, which seems pretty smart as he's probably trying to just not incriminate himself. Jace would then text Summers, send me 2k, which is where the conversation ends. Summers would catch his Instagram story with, but I'm broke. I never said none about y'all this, but you keep going bet. He said, tell the truth, laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just a rapper, I'm condone in that. Send that boy a band for his lawyer too, but I'm broke. Which is him just defending the fact that he's not broke when he's the one sending Jace money for his lawyer. After this, the situation didn't die down, but it got kind of repetitive, and Jace would just become the kind of punching bag of the underground. And the snitching allegations would actually damage Jace's career pretty seriously, and would ruin his opportunity of making it to the mainstream, as he supposedly had G Herbo, NLE Chopper, and Quavo on the 556 remix, which was supposed to have a lyrical lemonade music video, but due to him snitching, it never came out. And in general, the snitching allegations damaged his music career as he seriously could have made a big bag. Now throughout the rest of the year, not a lot of public information would come out about the situation as of course it's an ongoing case. However, there would be a lot of instigating and random beefs online. However, towards the end of 2022, it would get quite serious again. On the 5th of September, Jace would drop beat up the racks, which was a diss at Can Can after he dropped the diss post your racks gang at Ken Carson. Now I'm not sure why Jace got involved in this beef between Can and Ken, but I think he just wanted a reason to start a war with Can. Already from the title, Beat Up The Racks is a diss towards Can Can, as in 2021 he was arrested for battery of his alleged girlfriend. The diss track was kind of weak if I'm being honest. Jace had one line about Can Can being his ex-girlfriend, but the rest wasn't anything serious. However, towards the end of September, Can Can would drop the song GTA, which was a hard diss with many bars aimed at Jace. Boy, you a rat, just look at his stats, he needs to hang it up, clearly aimed at Jace calling him a snitch. How is he dissing? He used to hang with us. I'm like, what the fuck? Fella on IG live like a little ass bitch, acting like we switched up. Every single song this fella dropped, I swear that fella mentioned us. Acting like he ain't on paperwork. And I swear if it wasn't for that case, little bitch ass fella, yo ass would have been murdered. Which is kind of just going in on Jace completely. Firstly, for switching up on them, then the fact he is constantly mentioning them in his songs, the fact he snitched, then finally Can Can says that if it wasn't for the ongoing case, they would have put Jace to sleep. Now I don't know why this beef even started as Can Can has no involvement in the case in the first place, but he is close friends with Summers, so I guess that's where his involvement comes in. A week later, Jace would drop a diss track called No GTA, Beat Your Bitch, which again in the title is a diss towards Can Can for his arrest in 2021. In the two opening lines of the songs, Jace talks about wanting to slide on Can Can's father and then also slapping his mother. He would then say, beat up the end of the Drake like you beat up your bitch, which is a shot at Can Can, again, beating up his ex. Later in November, there would be series of IG lives including Jace, Summers and Daru. But it's the same stuff you have heard before. Just them blaming Jace for snitching, then Jace defending himself, saying he's not a snitch. And honestly, I have to give it to Daru. He's a funny ass troll. Ah, uh, jump the side. Now you ain't snitch. <sighs> See, you are here playing with these games. Why you talking about this case, bro? You oh. know who the informant is. Why you playing that puss ass shit with me, bitch? Fucking talking out, nigga. Why you playing that police ass shit with me, bitch? Well, you know who the informant is, nigga. Man, this nigga snitch and he hey, on this hoe. Hey, now look, bro. now Jay. You gonna get me now, on this bitch? There'll be more of these lives, but nothing really that adds to the story. Oh, actually, Jace would post a diss aimed at the room called Fridge, which I actually thought was pretty funny. However, as we move into 2023, fans would be flabbergasted after Summers posted a story of himself listening to Jace. Which got fans thinking, wow, are they cool again? Did they forgive Jace for snitching? Or were they wrong all along and Jace never snitched in the first place? But it was probably just Summers trolling and they're not actually friends again. Now in 2023, all the talk about snitching and just the case in general kind of got boring and stopped being mentioned. However, towards the end of the year in November, Summers would be caught sneak this in Jace, which Jace would react to. And he would even explain how him and Summers are cool behind the scenes and they speak often. But on social media, Summers wants to act gangster and pretend they're not friends. Stated everything in that paperwork, why is you lying, huh? It hurts the first time being covered that eye, huh? You were scared of that crime, huh? You was up in that bitch dropping all the dimes, huh? You want me to die, huh? You want them slimes to come put me in the sky, huh? Probably did that shit just the rep that you shot in the sky, huh? When you got exposed, you was probably trying to go in the skies, huh? PMO gonna respect your mind, not huh? to come your way with that crazy shit, all them niggas gonna die, huh? From the video, you can see Summers is singing something about lying about signing paperwork, and Jace would see this and react to it on his kickstream. Uh, oh, 
This nigga didn't get his first gun until he was around me. Fuck is you dissing for? Nah, f that. Fuck is you dissing for, goof? No, f that though. You ain't get your first gun until you met me. You had me go with you to Louisiana to watch your back. Uh, why you got the gun? You even said you was like, make sure everything goes straight, bro. Come with me to get my gun and whoop the whoop this that. And the next thing, like the fuck niggas think I'm pulling this on my ass on my kids. Go ahead, think I'm pulling this on me. Next day he'll diss me. One day he'll talk to me. Next day he'll diss me. And then niggas be like, damn, Jace, how come one day you say you cool with him and the next day you diss and the next day you say you cool with him? Then Cause of this shit, nigga, talk to me normal as fuck and go on Instagram, sneak this and that shit. Like, what are you talking about? Spoke on Tuesday. We just spoke on Tuesday, my nigga. Like, what is you talking about? So it seems like Jason Summers are actually cool behind the scenes, but on social media, Summers wants to talk about this case and Jay snitching so he can keep up this gangster persona. Then on the 23rd of November in 2023, Kanakon will drop a diss where he'll diss Jace again, called A Whole Year Later, where he just did the usual and called Jace a rap. Jace would also see this and react to it on stream as well. <laughs> Whatever makes you feel like a gangster, can can. Whatever makes you feel like a gangster. Where's the picture I'm looking for? I'm looking for a specific picture. Oh, yeah. Now, just a week later, on the 3rd of December, Jace would bite back at Summers and diss him on his new album. And again, I don't really understand the point of all these disses and internet beefs. My guess is Jace and Summers are just bored because they're on house arrest and they have nothing better to do. And yeah, I'm just getting a bit of tired of these internet disses and thankfully for us and the internet's sake, the entire situation would get wrapped up pretty soon. As on the 2nd of April in 2024, the case would be dismissed, meaning Jace, Summers, BZ and Desire would be let off completely free free, which is when Jace would start asking for apologies on a story. He would then go on live later that day and start asking for apologies again, which would get clipped by underground news pages and be posted on Instagram. Case dismissed. Case dismissed. I want an apology from the internet because my lawyer got everyone's case dismissed. She wanted me to go on and let niggas know. And Can Can would see these posts, so he decided to post an Instagram story saying, Still a rap, only reason Case got dropped is because the victim didn't show up to court. How are you rat and you wasn't even the victim? Fella basically ratted for no reason, now you're in paperwork for life on a dropped Case dumbass. He would then post a picture of his DMs with Jace where he read, Shrug, laughing emoji from Jace. Then Can Can replied, It's okay bro, you can admit you ratted, then white boys don't care, they still go and bump you, laughing emoji. You don't gotta be hooded for them bro, it's white kids. But like, that also kind of works for Can Can, because his listeners are predominantly white people. I mean, so is 99% of the underground, but anyways. But that wraps it up. In the end, the entire robbery, arrest, case, and this is all happened for nothing. No one got sent to prison, no one got their money back. All it did was ruin a fire duo, Jason Summers. But now to summarize what happened and some explanations, Summers wanted to act tough and set a respect limit with his plug, even though Jace told him, no, this is stupid, you're not a thug, just go get your money back like a normal person. But they ended up robbing the plug, beating him up and shooting at him. Jace spoke to the cops and they all got arrested which is when they would start calling jace a snitch now truthfully i like jace's music and i couldn't care less if he snitched but come on in the paperwork it says he waived his rights spoke to the police and even consented for them to search his house he should have kept his mouth shut and got a lawyer and then after they all got arrested and turned themselves in it was just a bunch of random internet beef and even though jace did speak to the police they were all screwed anyway they were all captured on cctv and the victim that they robbed all knew them personally anyway he had you know message logs instagram logs Zell logs, they would have been caught anyway. I mean, the police even used their Instagram and Spotify pages to identify them. And then eventually down the line, somehow Can Can got involved and Daru, even though they're not involved in the case at all, but they're just close friends of Summers. Until eventually two years down the line, the case got dropped because the witness didn't turn up to court. So do you guys think Jay snitched? Do you think they should have even robbed the plug in the first place? And was this all even worth it? Or was Summers just trying to fulfill his ego of being a gangster?